Vivo is a chamber music festival that happens every summer, um, leading up to Labor Day weekend. Jack Stoltz, co-artistic director, and I grew up here together. We've known each other since I was 11, he was 12. When I was growing up here, my friends would, you know, want to come see me in performances, and they'd be like, all right, do I have to wear a suit? Do I have to wear a dress to come see your concert? Like, it felt so foreign and so formal to them. But there was one time we were in the cafeteria together, we were playing a game of cards, and they said, Siwoo, if you lose, since you have your violin on you, you gotta play for the whole cafeteria. Um, and I lost. <laughs> so I got out my violin, I got on the lunch table, and I blasted away on the violin. Everyone stopped talking, um, and at the end of it, everyone just stood up and started clapping, and I was just like, this is awesome. These guys, like, most of these guys heard the violin for the first time, but they really enjoyed it. Um, so I was thinking that it's not that classical music itself is foreign to the public, but the experience surrounding it has to feel relatable. So we wanted to give that angle a shot um, through Vivo Music Festival, because with this festival, we're hoping to raise awareness and enthusiasm for classical music and chamber music in Columbus, Ohio, our hometown. Previous seasons, we've really explored a broad range of composers' works. Um, we went all the way from Georg Friedrich Haas, Gerard Grise, Mendelssohn, Brahms, Dvorak, you name it. Um, for this season, for the fourth, we wanted to harken back to the father of music, Johann Sebastian Bach. And one thing we both, uh, Jack and I, find really amazing about Bach's music is that it's still so universal and relatable. Through that, we thought of the idea lunchbox. That's lunchbox. Um, and we're taking um, these portable works to areas in the community in Columbus, Ohio, to folks who can't physically make it to the concerts themselves. So for instance, earlier today, we went to an assisted living facility um, and played through the Goldberg Variations. For us, we think a lot about um, that chamber music mentality. We have our concerts, we have our venues, we have our partners, and we have our audience, and we bring them together for every event uh, to create kind of a unique, once-in-a-lifetime experience.
Vivo is a chamber music festival that happens every summer um, leading up to Labor Day weekend. Jack Stoltz, co-artistic director, and I grew up here together. We've known each other since I was 11, he was 12. When I was growing up here, my friends would, you know, want to come see me in performances and they'd be like, all right, do I have to wear a suit? Do I have to wear a dress to come see your concert? Like, it felt so foreign and so formal to them. But there was one time we were in the cafeteria together we were playing a game of cards, and they said, Siwoo, if you lose, since you have your violin on you, you gotta play for the whole cafeteria. Um, and I lost. <laughs> so I got out my violin, I got on the lunch table, and I blasted away on the violin. Everyone stopped talking. Um, and at the end of it, everyone just stood up and started clapping. And I was just like, this is awesome. These guys, like, most of these guys heard the violin for the first time, but they really enjoyed it. Um, so I was thinking that it's not that classical music itself is foreign to the public, but the experience surrounding it has to feel relatable. So we wanted to give that angle a shot um, through Vivo Music Festival, because with this festival we're hoping to raise awareness and enthusiasm for classical music and chamber music in Columbus, Ohio, our hometown. Previous seasons, we've really explored a broad range of composers' works. Um, we went all the way from Garrick Friedrichs, Gerard Grise, Mendelssohn, Brahms, Dvorak, you name it. Um, for this season, for the fourth, we wanted to hearken back to the father of music, Johann Sebastian Bach. And one thing we both, uh, Jack and I, find really amazing about Bach's music is that it's still so universal and relatable. Through that, we thought of the idea lunchbox. That's lunchbox. Um, and we're taking um, these portable works to areas in the community in Columbus, Ohio, to folks who can't physically make it to the concerts themselves. So for instance, earlier today, we went to an assisted living facility um, and played through the Goldberg Variations. For us, we think a lot about um, that chamber music mentality. We have our concerts, we have our venues, we have our partners, and we have our audience, and we bring them together for every event uh, to create kind of a unique once-in-a-lifetime experience.
Vivo is a chamber music festival that happens every summer, um, leading up to Labor Day weekend. Jack Stoltz, co-artistic director, and I grew up here together. We've known each other since I was 11, he was 12. When I was growing up here, my friends would, you know, want to come see me in performances, and they'd be like, all right, do I have to wear a suit? Do I have to wear a dress to come see your concert? Like, it felt so foreign and so formal to them. But there was one time we were in the cafeteria together, we were playing a game of cards, and they said, Siwoo, if you lose, since you have your violin on you, you gotta play for the whole cafeteria. Um, and I lost. <laughs> so I got out my violin, I got on the lunch table, and I blasted away on the violin. Everyone stopped talking, um, and at the end of it, everyone just stood up and started clapping, and I was just like, this is awesome. These guys, like, most of these guys heard the violin for the first time, but they really enjoyed it. Um, so I was thinking that it's not that classical music itself is foreign to the public, but the experience surrounding it has to feel relatable. So we wanted to give that angle a shot um, through Vivo Music Festival, because with this festival, we're hoping to raise awareness and enthusiasm for classical music and chamber music in Columbus, Ohio, our hometown. really explored a broad range of composers' works. Um, we went all the way from Georg Friedrich Haas, Gerard Grise, Mendelssohn, Brahms, Dvorak, you name it. Um, for this season, for the fourth, we wanted to hearken back to the father of music, Johann Sebastian Bach. And one thing we both, uh, Jack and I, find really amazing about Bach's music is that it's still so universal and relatable. Through that, we thought of the idea lunchbox, that's lunch box. Um, and we're taking um, these portable works to areas in the community in Columbus, Ohio, to folks who can't physically make it to the concerts themselves. So for instance, earlier today, we went to an assisted living facility um, and played through the Goldberg Variations. For us, we think a lot about um, that chamber music mentality. We have our concerts, we have our venues, we have our partners, and we have our audience, and we bring them together for every event uh, to create kind of a unique once-in-a-lifetime experience. Hey there, thanks for joining us this afternoon. You're a little early, that's okay. Sit back, relax, kick your feet up, and uh, the concert's gonna start shortly, so follow me. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Siwoo Kim, I'm violinist and co-artistic director of Vivo Music Festival based in Columbus, Ohio, my hometown. Today's concert, Vivo Homeland, has been recorded specifically for you uh, in a very safe environment of the Columbus Museum of Art. Featuring musicians Henry Kramer, pianist, Matthew Lipman, violist, Jeffrey Myers and Estelle Choi of the Calador String Quartet, Alicia Huey from the Columbus Symphony, and myself, Siwoo Kim. And for announcements on future events, uh, please consider signing up for our newsletter at vivofestival.org. And without further ado, enjoy the performance. Hello, I'm Henry Kramer, pianist with the Vivo Music Festival this summer. The next piece you're going to hear is Franz Josef Haydn's piano trio in G major, sometimes called the Gypsy Trio. The first movement is a set of variations that alternate between major and minor. Um, so we start in G major, and then we have variations in G minor as well. And um, 
This is mostly shared between the piano and the violin. And in the second movement, we have a beautiful uh, walking, slow movement that is almost like out of opera with the piano taking most of the melodic material and then handing it over to the violin. And the final movement is the most fun in the piece and very familiar. Uh, it is based on gypsy folk tunes and it has a series of rustic dances and it's marked presto, so it played very fast and also alternates between G major and G minor like the first movement. So it's a really charming piece and I think speaks to the happiness of Haydn uh, when he composed it in London.
Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Lippmann and I am a viola player. This is my fourth time at the Vivo Music Festival um, and of course this season has been reimagined and I am so grateful to be here to be recording a wonderful concert for all of you to see, even though you can't be here in person. Um, one of my favorite pieces uh, on the program is the Kodai Serenade for two violins and viola. It uh, is a piece that's new to me, and I'm really excited to have the opportunity to play it. Um, and what's unique about this piece is that, unlike a string quartet, there's no cello. So being the viola player of the group means that I have the bass line, and I think Kodai takes a lot of advantage of the fact that the viola is the lowest voice in this trio. Um, it's an amazing piece uh, inspired by um, his Hungarian culture. And actually, Bartok said that this ser serenade composed in 1922 was a modern representation of Hungarian culture. Um, and I think that's so true. Um, there's a lot of folk rhythms, almost peasant tunes in it. Um, the second movement is a conversation between the viola and the first violin. The viola playing the role of kind of a serious, pensive old man, and the violin playing the role of kind of a flittering bird. Um, and both of them are in conversation the whole time. It's a beautiful, beautiful, hauntingly beautiful movement. And of course, then the last movement is a uh, race, a dance uh, to the end. And it's super fun, and I'm so excited to share it with all of you.
Hi, my name is Jeffrey Myers. I play the violin and I play in the Calador String Quartet along with Miss Estelle Joy, who Ooh. plays the cello. That's me. And uh, today we are performing Schumann's E flat major piano quintet, uh, which is a 
real jewel of the chamber music repertoire. Yeah, this piece was composed out of love, and uh, Robert Schumann composed this piece for his wife, Clara Schumann, and it's in four movements. And yeah, I don't know. Do you have anything else to add, Ms. Troy? It's quite exuberant. Um, the key itself, E flat major, um, really lends itself to a very joyful character. Um, so it's, uh, it's really fitting to be able to play a piece like this right now uh, during these very interesting times. Um, but we're really glad you can join us. Yeah, we need it. <laughs> <laughs>
Hi there. Thank you so much for joining us for this unique concert experience. Really hope you enjoyed it. We have a pay what you want model, and if you donated $10 as a ticket, you should have received a Zoom invitation for a post-concert reception right now to meet the musicians, chat with them. We can't wait to meet you. If you haven't done so, there's still time. Donate a ticket of $10 or more, and you can join us after we do some magical wardrobe and location change, that is. On behalf of everyone at Vivo and the board members, thank you so much for joining us tonight.